Hi guys, I'm Bobsy and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to work with a game manager in multiplayer. You can also use the same setup for single player but in this case I'm going to work with multiplayer. So I have the same setup as I already did in the NPC scene in the previous video. You don't need this setup for this to work at all. This is just so I have something to show you. Now first things first, I'm going to go make a new script and I'm going to call it my game manager. Now in this script, since I'm working with multiplayer, first thing I want to do is make this network behavior and we also got to be using fishnet.object. Next thing is the way that I work with a game manager is I work with game states. I had people ask me how would I make sort of a round system like in Valorant or Counter-Strike and this is exactly how I would do it. So if you just write enum and then I'm going to call this game state. Now an enum is basically a data structure that can only be one of the predefined options, I guess you would call it. So the first one, I'm always just going to call none. I would always do that. And then you just separate with a comma. And then I, you could, for example, make a loading, call that to number one, make a running, call that to number two, make an end, call that to three, and make a restart, call that to number four. For example, this could be an example setup of this. And the way that we keep track of what state that we are in is by just making a private and then game state. And I'm just going to call this current state. Now this current state will always only be able to hold one of them and by default it will be the one that is zero which in our case is none. The reason why I have this is because I don't want anything accidentally doing something. So I always want the default to be zero just so I'm sure that not, no wonky business starts happening. Now the next thing that I'll do is I'll make a void that's called change state and then in here I'll take in a game state and I'll, take, I'll just call that state. Now if I open this up I can always just say that the current state will be equal to the state that we send in. And now I can make a switch function depending on the state that's being sent in. Now the way that a state function works is it works with different cases. So what you do is you write case, game state, and then none, for example. This means that if the game state of none is sent in here, what do we want to do in this case? In this case, I just want to break because I don't want anything to happen. Oh, I'm sorry, you open it with pull on. So this is a bit of a different setup and you can do this for all of them. And as the last thing is, it's always a good idea to just make a default that can just do whatever that you really want. This is just in case that something's getting sent in that it doesn't understand what is, I, I think. And so I always leave it here. You can have it throw an out of range exception if you want to, which I typically do like so. All right, the next thing that we can do is we can make some custom functions for each one of these states that will happen. So for example, I can make a start loading function. I can make a void start running function. I can make a void start end function. I know that's a weird name. And a void start restart. And then I can just call them from in here. So I'll just add a new line and say start loading. And I'll do this for all of them. This now means that whenever a new state is called, we will run this the equivalent start function. So let's make some quick debug so we can see this in the inspector. All right, now that this is done, we can figure out what do we want to do. And what I can do is in running, I can grab my agent and say start agent. This is just a custom function I've already made. But again, you can do whatever. And in the end, I'm just going to do agent touch stop agent. And now this basically just works. Now let's add the multiplayer part and the game changing part, right? So in the update function, I'm going to say if input key down, and I'm just going to use uh, keycode.f for my example, and I can say change state. And what I can then change the state to is I can change it to the current state plus one. This means that we will just go one up equivalent to these numbers. You could also just input game state and then the state that you wanted to switch to. Let's say for example, we wanted to restart, we could do that. And actually in the restart function, let me go back to the loading one here so I can show you. So change state, and then I'm gonna feed it the game state of loading. And in the start function, we can also have it change state and go into the game state loading. Loading is where you could, for example, spawn everything that you need to spawn before the game starts or randomize what you need to randomize and so on and so forth. Now, to just add the multiplayer part, I typically just make sure that it's the server that controls everything in the game so that the game manager is always in charge with the server. So I'm just going to say if base is not the server, I'm just going to return. This is typically how I just make a game manager multiplayer and then just make sure that everything that happens is pushed to everyone. So let's go test this out. So now let's go make an empty game object. I'm going to call this game manager and I'm going to add the game manager script onto that. Now I'm going to add my NPC reference and let's start the game. So as you can see here, my NPC stands still. And when I press F, you can see it says running in the inspector at the bottom. And as you can see, if I press F again, it will say ending. And if I press F again, it will go restarting into loading. And now it's in loading phase. And then if I press F again, it will start running again. 
So now you can see we have a function in Game Manager with states that you can control however you want. Typically, if you had, for example, a shooter, you would probably go to the end state as soon as someone won. Then you'll display it for a while and then you go on to the restarting state and so on. You get the idea. This sort of state setup I find super useful and I really hope you do as well. And I really hope that you learned something. If you did, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe if you'd like to. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.